Hello and welcome to another special episode of No Small Roles, a D&D podcast where there are no small roles and all of the characters have fallen to their deaths. Uh, Great. Uh, How many D6s is going to be an exciting again? episode. <laughs> oh yeah, th- that's it. That's the end of the it's episode. Right, Thank you very much for listening everybody. Roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know we laugh but Not very small slow. episodes. Sarah Gain <laughs> as Deacon Fireheart Button. <laughs> I'm David Knight, your dungeon master, he, him pronouns, and I'm joined by these panicked adventurers. So say hi, everyone. Hello. I don't know if I can speak or if I'm dead. <laughs> nice. So uh, once again, we do have a content warning for this mini series. We have fallen into the horror genre, which means that there might be themes and moments that some listeners find uncomfortable. For a full content warning of this episode, make sure to check out the show notes and keep yourself safe. So, does everyone want to know what lies in the darkness below? Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, I don't know if I want to know. But <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah. I really Our do want to know. Our broken bodies. Mm. Yeah. Then let's cue the theme tune. Prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice Your tragic backstory better be worth the sacrifice Seize your sheets and D20 Let's play D&D Your haggard character swaggers with daggers in each hand You've all discussed what you must, but even best laid plans Take a turn when checks are missed Roll initiative Brandish your blades don't fail your saves No risk too great, no choice too bold This is your story No guts, no glory Confront your fate with every roll Every Inside one who will pay the price Their chance of success will rest upon the dice No risk too great, no choice too bold This is no small goals So, entering the Warren Deacon, Gale, Eloise and Thorn are met with a wall of messages and paintings of the Shepherd. Choosing to head on and meet Captain Gary Braithwaite further inside, Eloise amplifies Deacon's voice, calling out through the tunnels. Feels like such a bad idea now! Oh yeah, it was a terrible idea. (laughs) Deacon leaves a trail of chalk marks for the guard to follow, and the group convenes on a plateau, throwing their sacrificial rabbits out into the inky darkness with Gary, Cade, Firion and Rosie arriving shortly after, and only one rabbit left as an offering. The scared group argue over what to do next. Gale notices the pale torso of an elf clinging to the precipice, reaching for help, and chooses to ignore it. However, on skewering Rosie through the head and launching her over the edge, the torso reveals its full form of warped flesh and barbed bones. The party try to fight back whilst also escaping to safety, with Cade, Firion, and Gary's toy poodle Mopsy too, all impaled and hurled into the pit. Gale leads the rushing survivors through the tunnels to a rope bridge, and as they charge across, the ropes are cut, with Gary and Eloise plummeting into the dark. Hanging on with all their strength, Deacon, Thorn, and Gale tie a rope to each other before Gale teleports to the ledge above. There waits a figure with a pale, smiling face and crooked staff that pushes her back. As Gale falls, Deacon is pulled from the bridge and Thorn's hand becomes trapped between the wooden planks and in an attempt to secure his grip, he slips and they all fall into the abyss below. That's where we pick it up. I can't help but feeling that ignoring the the half-elf probably saved Gail's life, actually. (laughs) I feel like if she'd have actually gone, I'll give you a hand. Or 
Straight through the face. Yeah. Straight not through not the face. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, Do not go near that half elf. So uh, there we go. So um, things we've learned. <laughs> not going to help us. Don't be kind. <laughs> don't be kind. Exactly. <laughs> All of you remember falling, and you remember colliding with the ground. Oh man. Your hit points are at zero. <laughs> oh. What? What I want you to do now is roll one hit dice. One hit dice each. And that will be your new <gasps> health point. That, that'll be the amount of hit points you have. Oh. So yeah, where are you all at? Nine. 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 Thirteen. Four. Oh. oh, cool. Next thing I want you to do is everybody roll a d10. Excuse me. Oh, oh, I d10. rolled a d8. Oops. Oh, for, instead of a d10 for my hit die, I rolled the wrong die. Sorry. Okay, so that's eleven. Oh, bit better, bit better. So we're just rolling a d10. Just a d10 for a lingering injury. Amazing. Oh, eight, nine. Nine. Six. Three. Three. So, uh, those with eights or nines, you will have some kind of broken rib or internal injury going on. Okay. Okay. So that means whenever you attempt an action in combat, you must make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. On a failed save, you lose your action and can't use reactions until the start of your next turn. Anytime we attempt an action in combat. Anytime you... Yeah. Any action in combat, you need to make a constitution saving throw first. Oh. DC 10. And if Otherwise, goes, we lose that action. And you can't take reactions. And can't take reactions. Yeah. But we could take another... Like, if we were making an attack, we could still do, like, the second attack. But no reactions. The first one. No, you'd lose the entire action. Lose that entire I action. will say that you can also take a bonus action. That's okay. But any okay. main action... Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. You got a six. Um... You have the same thing. Okay. Deacon. I'm pointing at Deacon for the audience. <laughs> um, but it's a DC 15 constitution saving throw. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. Mm. Uh, Deacon, you wake up floating on the edge of, you can only assume is some kind of lake or river, sort of butting against the shoreline. There is panic coming from the other voices. You can hear Gary, you can hear Gail, you can hear Thorn, and you can hear Eloise in a lot of pain. As you kind of like come to and look around and like da uh, Gail's dancing lights are, are up and just encircling the, the small group of them. They're all battered, sort of coughing, and they're all gathered around Eloise, <gasps> whose leg is trapped between some very tight rocks. And they're panicking because it doesn't look like there's a way to get it out without cutting it off. Nobody move. <laughs> Nobody do anything. Nobody touch me. We can't just leave you. We've got to do something. I'll be fine. You won't be fine. Don't be silly. Just, just let me <sighs> concentrate. <laughs> right, what's that going to do? She's closing her hands together. And she's going to use telekinetic movement to shift the rock. I can move anything up to large, up to 30 feet away from me. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to try that to dislodge one of the rocks trapping my leg. Absolutely. Um, there is... Do you need to make a, a roll for it at all? No, or? it just kind of happens and get it once per day. Great. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the rest of you sort of back off a tiny little bit. And this rock, as you're concentrating, just grinds its way across your shin. Oh! oh. oh. There is definite breakage. Yep. <laughs> but it lifts, relieves the pressure. Yeah. And is thrown. Yeah! Yeah! Uh, Eloise... You've lost the use of that foot. Your speed is halved. Oh. Um, and you fall prone when using the dash action. Right. You have disadvantage on dexterity checks. Um, and only a regenerate spell can, can heal it. 
Right. That was about to be my question. <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess that's that for that then. <laughs> uh, I can um, try and patch us up best I can uh, whilst we try and work out where we are. Yeah. If I know what's just happened, I think it's pretty crucial that we move fast. If there's things coming through these tunnels, look, I, Eloise, this is this is not good for you, right? No. But we do need to, we do like as some way we do need to leave and we do need to keep moving. Um, so, Eloise, what's it going to take? What what do you need to move? Wrap up my foot. I could uh, hover every now and then, but it might take the rest of my strength. But anything is better than staying here. Yeah. Um, as I tried to um, just gather a hand to my chest and second wind myself. <laughs> uh. um, I'm going to use healer healing uh, um, on everybody with my healer's kit. Um, so I'll start rolling that whilst Daryl works out. What I got 12 hit points from second wind. Nice. Okay, so Deacon, you're going to get three plus four. Seven. Seven, thank you. Yep. Is that seven hit points? Seven hit points. Uh, Vicky, you're going to get three plus four as well. Three plus four. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to get three plus four. Okay. <laughs> Classic. Apparently all I can roll today. Ben, you're going to get four plus four. Ooh, thank you. And Eloise, three plus four. Classic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain. Um, I'm going to... Much appreciated. I'm going to cast Mass Healing Word. Oh. Um, and I'm going to do it at fourth level. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just a question. If that wasn't action doing that do, have I, with my broken rib, should I have done a con save every time I try uh, use my healing kit? That's an action in combat. Cool. Action in combat. Cool. Yeah. Okay, because ah, it took, cool, cool, cool. took as much time as I needed to, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Broken rib. Cool. Oh. Like, out of combat, we can just take our time and sort of do things. Exactly. Like, okay. yeah. Vicky, for mass healing word... You add a d4 for every spell slot you cast at Highland third level. Yes, 2d4 plus 3. Do I need to roll that per person or one and everyone gets I think it? it's once and then it's applied to everybody. Great. So she's going to say, I'm going to tell you a really, really quick, scary story. <laughs> 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 and she just goes, psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets eight, nine, ten, eleven more points. Uh, of- amazing. Oh, amazing. Oh my God, that's amazing. I am also, let's spread the healing fun round. Um, Thorn is going to cast Healing Spirit. So um, Thorn calls forth like the spirit of some sort of fey, sort of spirity sort of thing that looks a bit like Oberon from Midsummer Night's Dream, I reckon, mm. who sort of appears nearby. Um, and as Oberon sort of moves around the group, I will do 1d6 to everyone. I can keep this up for a minute. So that's 10 rounds, isn't it? So I can give everyone two. Wow. So, Daryl, you get back 12. Wow. Deacon gets back six. You. Do, 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 do. Gail gets back 10. Thank you. Captain gets back four. Sorry, Captain. It's all right. And I will get back eight. I'm looking pretty healthy. <laughs> what? Well, well Apart from my foot. <laughs> what level spell was that, Ben? That was a second level spell. So, in that case... Um, I assume this is all happening at the same time, so we're not using up too much time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a panicked rush of everybody trying to help each other out. Mm. So spells I and- um, would like to do bolstering magic on... Uh, where you, uh, I can give you a spell slot back. Oh, nice. amazing. So I need a... Uh, all I need to do is touch you. Um, and then... So you get a level two spell slot back. Amazing. Wow. I will then, if That's we've got great. time... Good, in it? Immediately ask Oberon for a second round. <laughs> Go for it. Let's yeah. Burn Let's burn that spell slot I've just been given back. Uh, ten to Eloise. I am full hit points. Wow. D can get seven. Thank you. I'm definitely not full hit points. <laughs> Gail gets another seven. Thank you. Captain Gary gets another six. And I will get another nine. How are people looking? Do we do we need more healing? I've got 44. I'm on 40. 
37. I could also do a bit more healing on folks if they're, depending on how they're looking. Got five uses left of my healer's kit. Always tap back in. I've got, to the I've got again. some spell slots. I mean, this is like, yeah, like I've, there, are, there are things I can do, but I, I don't want to do them if it's not necessary in case I need it to to fight whatever's I can, ahead. I can also do two more bolstering of magics if we need them, but it's whether I do them now or whether we want to save them for I another can, point. Do you know what this uh, this healing kit, healer's kit, is going to just weigh me down anyway? So let's uh, use up the last of it. eh? If you can't save my foot, and use it for the others. <laughs> I can't save your foot. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, what was your name again? Eloise. El- I don't think we've been formally introduced. Um, sorry about your foot, Eloise. Thank you. This is, I'll uh, heal the others, shall I? Yes, this is Captain Gary. Uh, three for Deacon. This is me going around with my bandages and f- vapour rub and... You know, <laughs> mix, mix oil. Mix oil. Uh, two for um, good, Captain, Gail. Thank you. Thanks very much. And I'm, I'm Gail. I, I appreciate it. Oh, uh, you're welcome. There's a lingering look. Oh. <laughs> he, he heals himself as he feels awkward, and because he feels awkward, he only heals himself for one. Oh, those are plus four, those things. Oh. So, sorry, three plus four, two plus four. Um, so that's five for me. So, yeah, shouldn't have got distracted by the interesting looking lady, pretty lady. Um, <clears throat> Courtney Cox on fire with leaves. Yeah, yeah Courtney Cox. Yeah. Never seen anything like it. <laughs> two, two attractive women and they spoke to me. Whoa, mm. this is weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, that's five plus four for you. Amazing, thank you. Ben, and because I messed up the roll for myself, I'm just going to use the last one up, uh, fix up the nose. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that's uh, six plus four, so that's ten. How's everyone looking? No more not looking too bad, I'm actually. Looking, I'm looking all right now. Deacon, I ha- yeah, I'm all right. right. I, my original hit points were pretty good, so <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'll just pop over. I'll just pop over to Deacon, and I'll just lay a sort of slightly furred paw on Deacon, and I'll just knit together a few more wounds on Deacon, and for a bit of flavour, where, where's Deacon injured? Ribs. Ribs. Plus okay. his ribs, yeah. Uh, as the ribs heal together again, there's just a little bit of, like, fur. Just a little bit of... <gasps> ah! Um, <laughs> that's that's so fun. Um, I've always so... wanted a hairy chest. <laughs> 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 ah, yeah, sorry. That is a side effect that sometimes happens. Um, seven. Eight points back. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, we still got our lingering injuries, don't we? Yeah. Still, yeah. 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 Um, those okay. will continue until you have a long rest. Or, okay. in the case of Eloise, someone regenerates that, that leg. Wow. Yeah. Um, going to check a lesser restoration wouldn't do anything wrong. Unfortunately with it. not, no. No, as you kind of all healed up, like, you've all caught your breath just that little bit. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, you're kind of, like, ready to, to move. Mm. But for anyone looking at you, you look on death's door. Mm. Like, you are... Mm-hmm. There are, there's definitely some kind of internal bleeding happening with everybody. The, the amount of bandages that, that the captain has kind of like <laughs> yeah. strapped to you all. Yeah. Like, Do I need this Vix strapped to my body? <laughs> yeah. It just it means that you can keep on inhaling it and it will get into your body. Just, you know, believe in the Vix vapor rub. But uh, yeah, even, even the small bits of healing, your clothes are already like sort of seeping with blood in patches. It's, yeah. I mean, when they're not soaking wet from the fact that you've landed in a rocky pool, you look awful. Where are you going? Look, let's all agree. If someone is doing badly, shout, and I'll heal yes. you. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Likewise. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. From here on out, we are a team. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you for coming all together like this. Yeah. Did anybody see anything uh, else? Do we know? Uh, I at, the, at the felt, top, at the yeah. top there, I saw the shepherd. You saw. I saw the shepherd. The shepherd. It was the shepherd that cut us, and has brought us down here. Yeah. Does everyone know the story of the shepherd before we go any further? I'm familiar with the rumour, yeah. Yes? No one needs to hear it again? Wouldn't mind a recap. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, as we're, as we're moving, yeah. Gail is going to re- retell the story of the shepherd. Without reading it through, Vicky. <laughs> Can you retell it? What do you remember? Oh, yeah, that? okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is, be terrible this is a memory. test. <laughs> yeah. What do you, do you want? From do you want to hear yesterday? a scary story? <laughs> as long as it's the good one. <laughs> with that. Um, so there's a there's a shepherd that lives up in the ridge near where we are right now, and the shepherd he loved his sheep, or her sheep, or their sheep. I couldn't tell you their pronouns to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but the shepherd, 
uh, took their flock up into the ridge and saw that one of the sheep had got lost and had got separated from the rest of the flock. So the shepherd went to rescue the sheep from where it was trapped. And when the shepherd returned to where they had left their flock, all of the sheep had been cut open and were bleeding and dead and dying all over the field. And then the shepherd saw a band of soldiers were responsible and had killed all of these sheep. So the shepherd took one look and a fixed smile at the soldiers and one by one <laughs> turned them all into sheep one by one. And it is said this shepherd lurks around the ridge and around this area with those very sheep to this very day. I always thought it was just a legend, but I'm starting to believe. What did they look like? Sheep. No, the, 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 the shepherd. Uh, I think the captain shepherd. means what the shepherd. The, 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 shepherd, shepherd, the shepherd you saw like. at the, the top of the ridge, Gail. A, a chalky face, a crooked smile, and a crooked crook. But I only saw them for a second before they cut the strings and before we fell down into the ravine. Damn it. The thing that I'm kind of baffled about here is that I get by the shepherd turned the original ones, assuming this is all real, and I'm prepared to go for it, because let's be honest, we've seen some pretty weird stuff. But he did the original turn them into sheep because they killed his sheep. But why attack everybody else afterwards? That's the bit I don't get. Yeah. We shouldn't be in any danger because we haven't done anything to his sheep. If I understand scary stories, and I really do think I understand scary stories, you are quite, uh, the, sh the shepherd is going to believe that we are the descendants of these soldiers that were responsible for killing his flock. And by the laws of revenge, by the folk stories, he's seeking his revenge on us. Some people just need a good sitting down and a cup of tea. But anyway, moving on. <sighs> so we need to keep moving, don't we? I think we, yeah. either, we, either need, we either need to kill the shepherd or rectify the wrongs that were done. How do we rectify well, the wrongs rectify that were done? Wrongs. We can't bring the sheep back to life. Then we've got to kill the shepherd, right? Looks like it. Well, the shepherd knows these tunnels better than we do. And if this, if this is a long-standing... Uh, story, then presumably they've got some sort of immortal thing going on here. They must but why? I mean, th this big incident that happened, something on this scale hasn't happened before. It's, why has the know? shepherd emerged now? So yeah. Something new Sorry, what happened? incident has just happened? Well, with, um, well, with members of my team, members of the guard, 20 of them slaughtered, disappeared. Well, I don't know where they are. We Down still here? Down here. They... We came down, we were we were trying to discover who was behind the smuggling. My commander was the only one to return and and he was shaken by what he saw that well he couldn't go on. What did he say when he came back? He said the shepherd lives. I I thought it was the the whisper of an adult brain, but, uh, but I'm just thinking why? Why now? What's changed? Yeah, something has changed or awoken this shepherd. Maybe something has been disturbed somewhat. Mm. There's something on this border, something near to where the garrison is, that's been awoken the shepherd, roused their ire. Maybe it's the conflict with the Eilish, and that's been fighting over for contesting territory. Yeah, of years. course. It's been going on for years. I mean, according to the legend, it was the Eilish soldiers, you know, that did that to, to their sheep. It, that's, I mean, we dug down into the warren. That changed. But also, maybe there was somebody new who came through. Maybe somebody who's using this as an excuse. The legend as a, as a cover. It's not unusual. We've heard yes. of things like that in the past. In my... Copycat killers. Perhaps the exactly. key to figuring this out is figuring out why the perpetrators killed the shepherd's flock in the first place. And then maybe there's a key to rectifying what's been done. Didn't you say Hunger. that they came up from a, from from the the valley because there was a war happen, happening, wasn't that the mm. original story? Mm. So the reason that they went up and killed them was they were desperate. Yeah, exactly that. Hungry. Hungry. Gail. Is that your name? Yeah. We've been together for ages now, mate. You've got a terrible memory if you can't remember that. <laughs> and your name was? Thorn. Thorn, yeah. Um, I would like to do an insight check. <laughs> on what is happening here? <laughs> what is this? 
I just natural. Oh, one. I rolled a, a natural one, but that's a six. Mm, I'd say because you're it's you're helping one. Eloise like hobble along. Twenty-two yeah. Yeah, deception. There is no. <laughs> there you can you completely miss it. Cool. Twenty-two <laughs> thorns being smooth. Yeah. Um, We've got away with this secret yeah, for a really long time. <laughs> when did this tale happen? Do people say when? Do I know, DM? No, it's just very old local legend. It's just a very old local legend. Ah, right. But if it is the shepherd, this is Judgment Day. And if this is what's happening, the end of the story is is that they become sheep, right? Mm -hmm. So somewhere there might be sheep. He's obviously magical. Hmm. With the talk of animals and shit, I'd like to have a little investigate around as well for any of the other people we saw fall into the ravine, mostly Mopsy. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. make an investigation check. Um, that's a 15. Well, okay, okay. So, as you're kind of all moving on together um, through the darkness, your hooded lanterns are lost somewhere. So you're really only relying on, on Gale's dancing lights. Mm-hmm. Um, Is that your name? <laughs> there is um, from what you can see actually because of the, the lake nearby this sort of slick stonework around you like sort of the rocks there is a bit of moss on them um, and further in as you're kind of wandering through these tunnels just trying to keep moving there are some larger barked bushes um, and it's hard to tell in the dark but Gary you kind of start taking a closer look at them because it looks like things are growing on them mm. And between all of the barbed branches kind of knitted between them, like piercing through, are just the carcasses of rabbits. Oh. Uh, you lot, you can see all these, this pile of carcasses, the, the rabbits that have been thrown in. Have they been eaten? Have they, Has something like eaten the rabbits? or They actually don't look like they've been eaten. They've Some of them have clearly been there for a long time that have almost yeah. withered down to just bone. Some of them are slightly fresher. But there is quite a large collection. The more you look and the more you wander through almost every one of these like spiked thorny bushes mm. has got some kind of carcass hidden within it. If I look up mm. do I just see darkness? Yeah. What are the chances that this is the other end of the chasm of which we escaped from. So that creature, if it went backwards where we found it, could reappear here. We could be in its lair. Exactly. It's good Saving these rabbits for another time to recover its strength. Or maybe the, the, rabbits, the rabbits were never consumed. Myth. No. It's become an urban legend. And perhaps that adds to our theory that this is new. Yes. We need to keep moving. We yes. need to keep moving. Yeah, definitely. I think if this is new, this is someone that knows this story. I think so. Yeah. Someone who's using this story for their own ends. Playing on the fears of others. Let's move. Maybe we're in the sequel, not the first one. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you continue on, sort of. Winding through, again, you've lost all sense of where you are in the Warren. So even for Gale, who you're quite comfortable down here, actually. You're aware of the superstitions and you're like, as long as I do that, I can move through. You are completely lost. You have no recognition of where you are. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the kind of marching order with everyone? Who's leading the way? Who's hanging back? I'm going to be the slowest, I think. So I'll be at the back. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm helping you as yeah. best I can. Quite tall and broad. Well... I don't yeah. mind being near the front, but I'm easy. Yeah, I know the way. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, De- and yeah, Deacon will be in the middle because okay. Bers is concerned. Gail, and Gail knows front. where they're going, so. Nice. Gail yeah. messages to Thorn, I am so lost. <laughs> <laughs> but then walks off like she knows where she's going. Like a, like a fake air of confidence going on. A real on. fake yeah. air of confidence. Nice. Yeah, and Deacon hangs on to that. It's like, yeah, uh, we'll follow her. Great. <laughs> <Come on." laughs> nice. So um, yeah, as you as you wander through, um, I, I will just oh yeah, message back. To, I will won't message back, but I'll just lay a little paw on uh, on your shoulder, um, and Gail, your eyes will just go a little bit more feline, 
and I'm just going to cast a little bit of guidance on you to help you figure out the way. Mm. And if anyone looked at your eyes for the next minute, they'll just be a little bit more cat-like than they were before. Nice. I like the idea of cat-like eyes. Yeah. Mm. So as you're moving through the tunnels, the the space widens. These these plants and the moss is actually growing more and more extensive the further you get in. And again, this this the Warren is not normally a place of, of plant life. It's it's rocks and and crumbling bits of stone. It's not somewhere that you normally see a lot of moss even. But suddenly the space kind of widens out in front of you and you find yourself in a small field. Hmm. Uh, sort of the abyss extends above you into darkness. But th- this little field is, is very much enclosed within a, a cavern itself. Mm, would you say it's like a little paddock? Like a little sheep paddock? Or it's kind of... If anything, it looks more like a, a kitchen garden. Oh. oh. Oh no. There are... A kitchen garden? There's like oh. curated plants. Oh! There's... Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, as you're kind of looking through it... Do you think it, pots and pans were growing out of the floor? <laughs> 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 Terrifying. <laughs> no. <That> mug tree. <laughs> I imagine that. Uh, I, like a, a kitchen made out of... Made out of garden. I like garden. it. Oh. <laughs> oh, I like it. So, like, yeah, the way that, like, different, um... I like that mushrooms and, and low bushes and almost herb-like looking things are laid out. It's very clear that this is being tended to. And more interestingly, at the far end of the garden, carved into the rocky wall, is a door. (gasps) Oh no. And it's open. Can we see what's through the door? Just darkness from where you are. Uh, Great. Brilliant. Is is there a check I can make to see if there's anything about it that we would recognise? Um, I'd say as you kind of like all move into this space, if anyone wants to make an arcana check... I can, uh, um, which would be a disadvantage for those with a level of exhaustion. Mm-hmm. Yep. Can I, I can't, I can't do an investigation? Because as a guard, I like to investigate things. You can. Okay, yeah. I've got, um, uh, can I? Uh, get, like, plus what five. sort of plants and things are there? Are they like humany plants? Are they like kind of like I'd like to? They don't look bizarre, but yeah, yeah. make an Arcana check, and I could or, or can a I nature make a check. Nature check, if yeah. that's possible. So Sixteen I, on Arcana. Nice. I have got magic awareness. Hmm. So, as an action, I can open awareness in the presence of concentrated magic. Um, until the end of the next turn, you know the location of any spell with a, any magical item within 60 foot. And when I sense that spell, I know which school of magic it belongs to. I don't have to roll anything for that, mm. it says here. I can only sort of- So, is it magical items or just like magical auras? It's. Kind of thing? It just says in the presence of concentrated magic, so it doesn't specify whether it. Okay. It says I, yeah. I would then know what it was, and I can I can do this three times. So. Um, yeah. So as you kind of um, yeah open your awareness, you do get the sense that there is some magical uh, properties to a lot of the plant life mm-hmm. um, in the area. Um, there are there's a mix of different things. You almost get the sense that there are like there's raw magical potential okay. in a lot of them. Not necessarily that they are a specific school of magic in any way. Right, okay. Like, you, as you're kind of, like, sensing them more and more and, like, passing through this little this little space, yeah, you think, oh, it's, it's almost like they're, they're, they're kinds of alchemical ingredients is what you're looking at. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, so you're like, oh, I can see that there's, like, a, a hint of abjuration in that one, there's a hint of evocation in that one, but they're not quite strong enough in, an, in what they are. Yeah. Um, further through the door, there is a definite sense of magic. What kind? Mm, that is a great question. <laughs> there is uh, conjuration, definitely. Okay. And also just a sense of transmutation. Oh, great. <laughs> cool. So I've shared that with the group. Mm. What I can. What school of magic is it that turns things into other things? Transmutation. Transmutation. Okay. Yeah. Good shout. So um, yeah, everybody don't worry else. about my nature check. I rolled a five. Great. <laughs> uh, with the Arcana check, and what? How was the investigation? Um, so my investigation was a non-natural twenty. Ooh. Yeah. Amazing. And what? How was your check? Okay. I didn't do any checks. I thought oh. everyone else. I I have no modifiers, and I'm exhausted. So I feel Fair. like ah. So let everyone else um, do Eloise that. did a Arcana. Yeah, yeah. Arcana. So Eloise, as you're kind of looking at the plants themselves, you start picking out what they are. 
um, yeah, and a little bit of your training, um, especially especially through the associates and doing some like assassination work, you've had to put together some some poisons, some huh. of a slightly magical nature. Sure. Um, and there are a selection of there's some rot weed in here. There's some drake leaf, some crowcap mushrooms. Um, there are some more useful things like healing type things, like all heal. Uh, that you think like those those are plants that can be like used as ingredients in healing potions, mm. for instance. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's very definitely kind of confirms what Deacon has said that this is very much a this is a this is a plot for growing alchemical ingredients, specifically alchemical rather than like spell component. Like, is that the yeah. Same? yeah yeah not things that can just instantly be used, yeah. but more stuff that can be prepared and brewed. Okay. Yeah. As for in the investigation check. You kind of edge closer to the door, mm-hmm. and as you're kind of sort of looking at the path out, it's very, very clear that multiple people have gone in, Ooh. and some very large things have come out. <gasps> oh. Oh. Uh, looking at these footsteps and uh, investigating further at It looks like people have gone in and things have come out. Maybe large things like what we saw up in the cavern. Brilliant. And with what you're saying about the magic and transmutation, Transmutation. Mm. maybe there is somebody... Conjuration and transmutation. ...changing people. Into that thing that we... So earlier on the ridge, that seemed to be made up of people. Lots of different people. Lots of yeah, different people. I could see lots of different species all mixed up in it when I looked before. As they're talking, I'm palming the the ingredients from the garden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good, very good, <laughs> very sensible. My yeah. inner Give yourself a collection of alchemical ingredients. Exactly. Yeah. Well. yeah. If, there- if Alfie is the shepherd, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> so you know. oh. Surprise, Robbie! Come on, <laughs> <in>. <laughs> he's here. Um. David, can I ask, mm-hmm. uh, w- as part of that investigation, yeah. did I have I seen any like buttons or any <laughs> <laughs> anything, yeah, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything that like like a, a tuft of clothing, anything that could give me a hint towards whether my team potentially mm. yeah, I will say with, came through with this such way. a high roll. Um, yeah, there's a very definite boot print that you're like that is standard, standard issue, issue. Oh. Um, and it's fresher. It's much fresher than some of some of the other imprints through the grass. Uh, I think my team might have come through here. They might. I've got to hope they might still be here. I've got to go through that door. Well, if you're going through the door, I think we all agreed a minute ago we were going to stick together. Seems a bit of a sensible thing to do, doesn't it? But I mean... Does the door look like our only real way out that's not going back? Yep. There is entering into this abode, Mm. or there is wandering through the tunnels. Back the way we came. Yeah. Given the state that we're in, going back is certain death. Then we have to move forwards. Yep. Time to find some answers. Yes. Maybe a bit happier if there was a way we could protect ourselves, but here we go. Got to keep moving, folks. Come on, let's go. Okay. So you step quite... Um, mm. May I ask how Deacon is getting on with his movement? Does he need another little buff with Long Strider? Oh, oh actually, yeah. I would say that will have run out by the time you've kind of healed each other and come through this space. Yeah. So yeah. I have buffed you. Ooh, so you know, so you still nice. got 30. So back up to 30. Back up yeah. to 30. Thank you. Thanks very much, Captain. Um, yeah, so you cautiously enter into this space mm-hmm. and... You're greeted with a very soft, perfumed aroma in the air. It's almost like honeyed milk. Uh, you stand in a small room of simple carved stonework. It's darkened in the corners with some sort of aged damp and mold. Um, but actually, because you can tell that people have passed through, there's very little dust on the floor. Um, some of the stonework is cracked in places. And whilst there are sconces in alcoves on every wall, not one of them is lit, and indeed, uh, they look like they've long burnt past any use. Uh, there's a wall to your right that opens out into a wider space, but directly opposite the door is a set of stairs that drift downward. Which way are you going? 
There's a big space to the right, and there's the steps going downward. Yeah, yep. that's her options. From can, can I invest? Uh, do an investigation check to see if the tra- the trail, or should I do survival? Um, so I'll I say can follow the trail. Of the- from just looking, there there are footprints and movements in both directions. Okay. What about boot prints that I recognise? Yeah, I'll say both it's, directions. Yeah, it was as well. such a good roll okay. beforehand. I'll say like it, you know what you're looking out for, okay. and yeah, there's people have split. So stairs going down, or you can walk into a wider space to your or right. Into a wider space to our right. You said there's a perfume scent in the air, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, Daryl, knowing a little bit of assassin history, uh, perfumes are used for assassination. Can I, like, have a history, some kind of check, to see if I recognise if it's, like, mm. there's an ingredient used? Yeah, make a history check, yeah. Could I also make a history check? I was You can, it would thinking, be a disadvantage for you yeah. because of the exhaustion, but go for it. 12. I don't know if 12. Vicky would still be guided from me guiding you earlier, but... You haven't used that yet, have I you? Haven't, I haven't used it. I'll, I'll allow it. Cool, thank you. So, you know how guidance works. <laughs> I just rolled the same number yeah. on both of my rolls. Um, oh, dear. Oh, I don't even know if it's worth using. Guidance, guidance as well. <laughs> Ten? Ten. I'd say, no, it smells very nice. It almost smells drinkable uh, and enticing in that way. Um, as for, like, trying to get something out of it, you do get the sense that it is some kind of alchemical sort of byproduct, mm-hmm. but you don't know whether or not it's dangerous. Okay. Is it coming from the steps or from the room or the room to the right or just generally it's in the air? Uh, it's just generally in the air. I keep thinking, don't drink the milk. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got and to- welcome, Jeremy Carl. <laughs> <laughs> we've got two oh. options. Going down seems a bit crazy, but at the same time, that massive creature is definitely going to be able to fit in that big space. So what do we think, folks? I think down. Down? I think that's a good idea. The only thing is if we go down and there's something else up here, if it follows us down, is it worth checking what else is on this level before we descend True, and further also, into a building? Exactly. My point exactly I was about to make, actually. Um, if you go downstairs... And it's a dead end. The 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 tunnels stop <clears throat> advancing, and the creatures behind us we are then trapped. I'm already feeling trapped enough as it is. So let's check up here first. Die down the stairs if the uh, if it if it comes and out. Happy to go with with the majority, folks. Come on, let's just keep moving. Right, come on. Gayla started going down the stairs and looked back and is like, "Why is no one following? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Why is everyone else yeah. back?" <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, you kind of edge around into the wider space, um, which is, it's, it's actually, it's almost like an entry hall is, is the sense that you get of it. That damaged and old and the sense of abandonment, but also, again, that smell keeps going on, that the lack of dust makes you feel like there's, there's clearly people that have been moving around in here. There are a couple of stone benches in the space. Um, on one wall, uh, it's dominated by a, a ram's head uh, mm. kind of carved design mm. uh, oh, whilst opposite that um, there is a degraded painting that's kind of peeling away in, in its corners uh, and faded beyond most recognition there are three doors out uh, one opposite the the way you've just come in uh, and two down to your left at the far end can I investigate the painting? absolutely history check please nah it's like nine there are seven people, but one of them sat down. That's It's really hard to make out any details in this thing. Uh, seeing Eloise look at the painting, being a local myself, I decide to go and have a look. Um, mm. Sorry, I was about to do advantage when I have no advantage. <laughs> uh, history, you say? Yeah. Mm, not much better. Uh, Eleven. No, again... Uh, like I say, it's one person sat seated in the middle and, and three to either side, so seven altogether. But you can't make out any details. Mm. Anything of significance about the ram's head? It's carved. It's not a like stuffed ram. No, it's it's carved stonework. Carved stone. Yeah, very realistic. Very realistic. Not in a like ah, oh, this could have been a ram's head kind of way. It's More like well, a, someone well has made. someone has well taken like, time. Taken time. This is some like a piece of art. Yeah. Could I do a check on the painting to see if any of the faces are clear enough to match the face that I saw 
at the top of the yeah the absolutely ravine. yeah Ooh, that's a good one make an investigation check for that and that's Again, a disadvantage disadvantage oh no oh uh investigation mm. yes it's five <laughs> Five. Yeah, you're just like you're trying to, ma- and especially having like seen them, you almost don't want to look for fear mm. of seeing that face again. Mm. Uh, so yeah, you kind of give them a quick skim, knowing that you kind of want to check, but you don't give it long enough. Can I look at the head, the carved head? Just mm. want to check to see if there's anything like uh, anything like residue of something, some material like some alchemy material, or even blood, or even. Or just just to look at it and see if it's been used or worn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say you don't even have to really make an investigation check for it. It looks like it's been carved directly into the wall. Oh. So whilst it like does protrude a little bit and is very impressive and is very large, um, it's almost like as this whole space was being built and carved out, yeah. this ram's head was just kind of carved out as part of the wall. Um, at the edges, kind of the, the tufts of fur around its 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 neck blend directly into the stone. Can I try to see if I can like, pull it or something? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't move. Mm. It doesn't move. It's, um, yeah, you sort of grab some of the horns, twist it around, check the sort of the muzzle. Yeah. Um, no, it, it's, it almost has the air of, of a sigil in some ways. Right. Well, whoever carved this and used this space, it's not a recent looking thing. If our shepherd is new on the scene, this is from some time ago. Could this be one of the shepherd's flock? Well, I mean, they it wasn't say just sheep, but it was rams in this legend, it was, was it not? It was the ram. They say it was the ram that he went... That They say it was the ram that the shepherd went to go find. Aye. And the ewes ah, that, had that left were left behind. The flock. Which I suppose the ram would have been the survivor. As long, along with the shepherd, you know, because... So what shepherd. if it's not the shepherd? What if it's the ram? <laughs> <laughs> Are we speak figuratively or <laughs> metaphorically <laughs> ram? Knowing that the shepherd turned people into sheep. I think let's just keep going. Yeah. Well, we found some more doors, so... Uh, yeah. So... We've got that one straight ahead of us and the two down to the left. Or the one in the other room. Which way are you going? Roll a d4. <laughs> I would like to do an investigation to see which one seems like my team might have gone. Mm-hmm. If there's a particular... Uh, 18. 18. So, as a sort of a quick check, the door directly opposite the way you've come in, you kind of... It doesn't... It looks like people have walked up to the door, but the door hasn't opened. So you give it a small push, mm. um, and there's definitely something blocking it the other side. Mm. Uh, you can't sort of swing it back into the space to, to see, but as you're trying to open it, it's not moving. Something is blocking it. Um, and it doesn't feel like it's locked. It feels like it's blocked. Yeah, exactly. Um, as you, you check the other two, and yeah, there are footprints that are leading out. You kind of get the sense, and knowing your unit, that they they might have broken out into smaller groups to investigate, investigate each of the spaces. Yeah. So again, there are footprints in, in all directions. Um, of course. Both of the other doors do open very easily. Sort of, you try a handle, and they're, they're very nice doors. Actually, they're sort of wooden um, brass handles on them. It's if this weren't the state that it was in, you can imagine that if, like, if it was all lit up nicely, this might have been a very nice home, perhaps. You, you're a smuggler, aren't you, Gail? And a storyteller, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if anybody within your smuggling community has been down here before? Do I know that? No, I wouldn't say you knew, either way. You've heard legends of like people exploring the Warrens, but some some people that wander into the Warrens don't come back. I say that as it some people that wander into the Warrens don't come back. Okay. Cause this seems like, you know, a space that if you were gonna be smuggling great place to keep stuff if it's unknown there's no sign of there's no sign of like boxes there's no sign of like habitation habitation or but like or you know if people using it as a storage space anything like that not in this space no Uh, this one door it's not locked it's it's blocked maybe there's something 
someone on the other side? Can I just because it's in my head now and I need to like get it out of my mouth? Yeah. Um, how much do we know about the Vondels and Tillisham and the folly under the ground? Oh, um, very little, I would say. Okay. There might have been some talk of of yeah, oh, some rich folks down down the other end of the yeah. country have have um, been stealing from their town folk, but the details of it. Cool. Yeah. Not enough to go. Oh, maybe this is a similar this thing. Is, mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah th- this this is this is new for me. Um, I, like, is there a door that looks like if we were still up on the ledge, we would be heading in loosely the same direction? You have no idea which direction you're heading in. Unfortunately, having fallen po- fallen uncon fallen down, fallen unconscious for a little bit, and woken up in a different yeah. space, you've got no idea. I think. Gail walks towards one of the doors and says, it's this way, and does not look confident, but is trying to look like this way, but she isn't convincing anyone. <laughs> I want to insight check that. That's <laughs> Eloise. Daryl knows, but Eloise does yeah, not yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to see. I wouldn't smart. mind insighting if I might. As well. um, I also that's a 14. Something. 14? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I think she's trying her best, but Mm. Like she has no idea what's going on. Yeah, um, but is sort of going towards the the, the right hand door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, before you go through, should we just have a quick listen? Is is it a shut door that you're heading towards? Yeah, both of them yeah. are pulled closed. Yeah. Mm. Should we just have a quick listen to see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not walking into anything. Yeah, make an investigation check at the door. Whoever wants to. May I please? Mm. Now you may not allow this, and that's totally fine. If not, the door that's blocked. Mm -hmm. Hello. I have blind fighting, which means I have blind sight with a range of ten foot. With a range, I can effectively see anything that isn't behind total cover. But if I get down to the bottom of the door and I try to see through the crack, is there any way that with my blind sight I can try and work out what is on the other side of that door? Mm, Make a perception check. I will say, Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll allow that. Thank you. Uh, Non-natural 20 to listen at the doors. There's nothing, there's no movement the other side. Um, As you listen, you can hear movement further off and below. Below. I will tell the group. Yeah. There's movement Um, below. For your perception check, Gary? Seven. Hmm. Seven. You you try to peek in and there is, it's just, there's no light beyond. There is. But I've got blind. Blind sight, blind sight. Yeah, there's <laughs> and you rolled a seven. Um, <laughs> and I rolled, and I rolled a seven. As you're as you're trying to like you know rub the floor to see if there's any there's no movement of like so there's nothing sending okay. any tremors out or anything like that. As you're just trying to sense the space, it feels like that there is almost like a wall of growth the Ooh. other side of it. Gross. Maybe plant life of some kind. Mm-hmm. Maybe something else. But it's it's there's a a lump. Of something. What vibe does that give me? Bad vibes. Bad vibes. <laughs> yeah. okay. Bad vibes. Bad vibes. <laughs> Bad vibes. Yeah. What vibe does that give me? It's such yeah. A good Can I do yeah. a vibe check, please? Vibe check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You you can't tell whether or not it is organic material or not. Mm-hmm. Okay. I feel like he kind of swallows and just decides to step back and see what everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. I'm right in assuming we want to be moving away from the movement. Away from the noise. Yes. yes. Let's try one of these doors. Hi. Gail, you said this one? Yeah. Well, I mean, has anyone got a better suggestion? Then let's go with Gail. Hello. David here, your devilish DM. If this horror-themed four-parter is your first experience of No Small Roles, then welcome and thank you for joining us. If you are curious about our main campaign, we suggest listening up to episode 8 and then see how you're feeling about the show from there. There is also a handy recap of episodes 1 to 5 if you want a head start on that. And also, if you want to hear more from Deacon, you can find Sarah guesting on episodes 16 to 18. For our regular listeners, episode 73 will be making its way into your ear holes in June, so keep an eye on your feeds. But if you all have any questions or thoughts that you'd like to share with us as you listen to this gruesome adventure, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at NoSmallRolls. 
simply search No Small Roles on Facebook and our Discord link can be found in the show notes. You'll also find a ticket link to the touring production of Sense and Sensibility, which every member of this Fireheart cast is involved in, either on stage, behind the scenes, or both. Except for Ben. Slacker. To avoid being a slacker like Ben, we'd love it if you could take a moment and rate us five stars on Spotify and write a little review on iTunes, Podchaser, or Podcast Addict. Reviews are such a great way of helping others find this podcast, so get typing. And that's all from me as announcement, David. Time to put my DM hat back on. It's a very nice hat. Or is it? So you push your way into the room, and the perfumed aroma is much less in here. Mm. Uh, Instead, there is the smell of crumbling pages as you look upon rows of bookshelves surrounding a a central platform in the room uh, (gasps) upon which stands a table with a single wooden chair upturned beside it. There are loose sheets of paper scattered across the wooden boards of this library and they barely move as you walk across them, having been there for so long that they've almost fused to the ground. What sort of platform is Mm. in the middle of the room? Uh, Just a kind of, like a raised circular step. Nothing on it? Beyond the table, this chair, and there are some books on the table. The room is almost set up as as some kind of, yeah, study library, and that is clearly the focal working point of the the space. Can I approach the table? You can. And just look at what's on it? Yeah, like I say, it's some books. It's a pretty standard square, wooden, maybe... You kind of, I can imagine almost one of Gail's dancing lights following you over um, to help you look, but it it looks like a a desk, just a desk. What books are on it? Um, a stack. I'm really trying not to orange. I'm really trying not to orange. I want to know as well, so please continue. <laughs> they are, whilst they are very well bound, leather books, a whole set of them completely identical as well. Uh, these ones, you sort of pull one forwards. Um, and open it up and Mm. the back pages are blank so you flip further forward and on every single page is written the exact same phrase which is prepare the flock and be patient the heart of fire approaches (gasps) the heart of fire the heart of fire and you've introduced yourself to thorn as fire heart so instantly, Thorn, Thorn, as you're looking at this, is looks up at Deacon Fireheart Button. <laughs> Deacon's just like, what? <sighs> what? What? Why are you looking at me like that? Fireheart. Yeah. You've never been here before? No, I've been travelling up for, uh, from the country. This is as far as I've got so far. Why? Something or someone knows of your approach I mean I guess I've not made it secret that I'm heading through but it's not something I've necessarily advertised this book is old um it doesn't actually look that old as I say it's identical to the others on sort of stacked on the table around it but all of the front half of the book is written the exact same phrase over and over and over and over and over and over and every single page is filled with it It, and in the same handwriting yep in, and what sort of handwriting? Like, neat, tidy, terrible, scrawled. Bit of all of it. Made of blood. Not blood, mm-hmm. ink. Ink. ink um, and, but it seems to vary. Sometimes it is incredibly cursive and beautifully written. And sometimes it is scratched in. Sometimes it takes up two, three pages to get through the phrase. But like the same person has written it, but in different... In different ways, you different can tell. ways. Yeah. I will just look at Fireheart and read what it says. Prepare the flock and be patient. The heart of fire approaches. Does that mean anything to you? No, that's... The path that I'm following has got nothing to do with a flock. I'm looking for a a warrior. I'm not looking for anything like this. Could be a coincidence. Insight check on Fireheart. Mm. Go for it. Twelve. Deacon's telling the truth. He doesn't know anything at all. What's everybody else doing in the the room? 
what else is in the room? Sorry, this yeah. has just made my focus yeah, go yeah, zoom yeah. down to this book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there are bookshelves kind of arranged almost in a circular fashion around this table. At the far end, sort of you wander through uh, just around the, the bookshelves, there are, at the other end of the room, there are two doors, basically in the corner, but on op- like walls next to adjacent mm-hmm. walls. Um, paper everywhere as you're sort of looking through there are some books and some sections of these shelves that are clearly much older Mm. um the books there are a bit more degraded uh a little bit dustier and some of them are of a different style as kind of you can see thorn looking at these this book and and addressing deacon and you can see like that style of bound book and the way it's sort of presented there are a couple of shelves of that exact thing but then there are other shelves with completely different styles of books then i would like to go and take out a book that looks similar to see what is written in a similar type of book, please. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, so as you kind of sort of find the shelf with those on and um, look toward the, the dustier end, so if you take one out and it's much more coherent. It doesn't just include this one phrase over and over. Uh, one phrase does catch your attention. She opens the book and reads... Little is left of my past self now. It slips away and I am left with a single thought. My friend's final words before this self-imposed exile. Prepare the flock and be patient. The heart of fire approaches. I shall wait for this sign and then to war. Hmm. Can I jump out of the game for a second? Is this one of the other mirrors from Crow's Tower? That was why I was Ooh. asking what was on the yeah. what was on that circular thing in the middle. Yeah, that's why I was like, this feels it does feel like, like a founder. This feels it? Yeah. like yeah. a founder, but obviously we don't. Know yeah, that. we don't know that. But yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, that's that was the moment we came into this library. I was like, mm. founder. Mm. I mean, this is nothing like. Yeah, 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 yeah. You read that out loud, don't know. you? Yeah, I read that out loud. So who wrote? This little is left of my past self. My friend's final words, someone else has said, prepare the flock and be patient. The heart of fire approaches. And then lock themselves away. Someone else said it and then whoever's written this has... Oh, that yeah, yeah. My friend's final words before this self-imposed... Who's self-imposed exile? The person writing it? The person writing. Did Gail say that out loud, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Is there anything about this in associate history that's familiar? No, I wouldn't say so. Okay. It's not what I think it is then. Anna, just because just I would kick myself if I haven't... Do we, like, do we know anything about the founders of the consortium? No, as a group, I wouldn't say that is... You have any awareness mm. beyond some story of the founding of the country. Mm. There's no... You know, you know that there were some very old people that set up a country and like there were a yeah. group that founded the Arcanist Consortium and and all that kind of thing but surface level you don't know anything about you none of you could name one of them I would mm. say Sarah did mm. you did, remind me what you just told Thorne a minute ago did you say you were looking for a what did you say you were looking for a warrior a warrior Fireheart mm-hmm. you said you were looking for a warrior that's right this ends and then to war this warrior you're looking for Mm, tell us more about them. Well, the, the worry is great and uh, mighty, obviously. I want to train with him and follow in their path. Uh, the reason I don't believe it's him, because it's said he defeated the half an army with nothing but a toothpick in the glare of the midday sun. He's a defender warrior. Wouldn't go out and just kill. Just everything I've seen, I can't believe it fits with what I've ever known. It's They're called Silith Valia. They're incredible. Or they've been known to take themselves on huge, epic battles on their own, single-handedly. That's why the flock doesn't make any sense. Mm. It was always, you know... ah, You know, he always thought it was better to die fighting. You should never give up. You should, you know... I'm sorry, this is too much. It can't be him. It can't have anything to do with him. Who sent you? Like, what what led you to, to seek this person out? Well, there's a legend where I come from. And the talk of this warrior, this great and mighty warrior, and just phrases and fragments that I know of him, 
and this compass that guides me to take me towards the warrior. But I know I've got further to go. The compass is telling me that. What the compass? Compass. As a per I have it about my person. I've had some bad luck with that compass in the past, so I like to keep it close. But I know when I need to check it, and it's telling me to go forward. It's not bringing me here. It's still pointing you elsewhere? Yes. Where's it pointing now? North. Can we, can we just see it? Just to, you know, put my mind at rest. Well, I suppose things can't get any worse, can they? So De Deacon fumbles around in the back of his trousers, <laughs> puts his hands down his pants <laughs> and pulls out this compass. <laughs> I said I keep it close. This is my compass. This is it. It's. I've discovered it's very different to everything else I've ever seen, that anyone else has ever seen. I, I know what compasses do. They point you in a direction, but this one only points to where I need to go. And it, it's pointing me past here. Look, you can see. When it gets to the place I'm supposed to go, it will spin and it will just keep spinning. And it's not. Look, you can see it's pointing north still. Can I and Deacon is completely not. correct. It's mm. not. It's not, it's not moving. It's mm. it's still pointing onwards. Mm. Fire heart. May I um, see it? If you permit me to hold it for a brief second. I don't know. I've had some bad luck. Um, I'm going to insight check her yeah. If, yeah. if Deacon doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Can I insight check? Yeah. Yeah. Insight check, Eloise. Listen, David's eyes are like <laughs> gleaming like gems at the moment. I love this. <laughs> oh, 19. Oh. Yeah. Will it, can he trust her? But that's a loady question. <laughs> How do I answer that? Yeah. Um, you see a fervent desire to hold the compass. Can I then insight check to see if she's going to snatch it out of Deacon's hands if he gives it to her? That's the insight check mm, I want to okay. do. Yeah. It's disadvantage, right? It is. Oh, actually, that would have been disadvantage oh, for sorry. Deacon as well. Oh, no. Oh. 18. Still an 18. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you still That's get still that. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Retcon. Mine was 12. It was the low. Yeah, 8. 12. Four, yeah. yeah. Is it obvious that for the 12, whether or no, not what not you're really. going to do with it? No. No. The only thing I'm prepared to let you do is you can hold the back of my hand while I'm holding it. I've got weapons on me. You do anything, I kill you. Are we clear? She flashes a grin. Crystal. As she holds her hand up to touch the back of Deacon, Deacon's hand and look at the compass and see what happens. Nothing. It continues pointing where it's pointing. I'm satisfied. Good. I'm going to put this away again now. We're all satisfied. In that I, think it's space I think yours. it's important that you do. Yeah. Deacon Furkle's around the back of his pants again. Um, <clears throat> David, with the mm. name of Silith Valia, as, yeah. as a guard and from this area, can I do a history check if that's just ringing yeah. any bells for me? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> that is... 13... 13. You don't recognise the name exactly. You have almost come across people talking about the warrior, but you've kind of assumed quite often that, you know, there's, there's a huge bunch of adventurers out there who are just like, I'm going to go find fabled heroes and learn from them and that kind of thing. So hearing another one, you're like, oh, it's just, it's just another fanatic, another follower who's not actually like doing their duty and like guarding something or like mm. helping like a, a place. They're kind of just going off on an adventure. But you don't know specifically Silla Valley. Okay. Yeah. If I took another book out, is there like anything, any... Oh yeah, there's more stuff to read. More information? Oh. Um, yeah, you grab a book that's not of the same style, but of a, of a similar aging, mm -hmm. you would say in the book. Um, and as you're kind of flipping through, you read this. In attempting to replicate the elvish lifespan... I have hit upon a number of other enhancements. They are flawed in their current state, but I am certain that with further experimentation, they can be stabilised and prove useful for our other endeavours. Yeah, we that out, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like something a, a warrior would be interested in performing. Also, like I said, my whole mission is to get into to train with this warrior. So that's yes. a book that's goodness knows how long. 
This also. is something else, and this sounds like someone experimenting with fusing different creatures together. It does. And there was that transmutation, transmutation spell that I could tell. Someone who would turn sheep into men, men into sheep. Mm-hmm. Maybe stories, fables have arisen from... Soldiers into sheep. Soldiers. And sheep into soldiers. Into mm-hmm. sheep, sheep into soldiers. But maybe fables have arisen from real-life experimentation. That would make sense. Growing up in Fallus Vale, would I have known just like even in schools about the mortal uprising and what it was about mm. uh yeah it's kind of I mean, it's how? earlier than the founding of Dravain though yeah so you're there is some vague awareness of it uh-huh um this kind of thing did not come up in any studies no so I couldn't like I, this is out of out of character and like mm. couldn't connect the fact that why the humans Oh yeah, for, you can yeah, you yeah. kind of get the impression that yeah. yeah, this is this is clearly yeah the the issue with the mortal uprising being that the elf, elves lived so long they yeah. stayed in positions of power yeah that this yeah is some kind of reaction to that mm. fact yeah um but whether or not this is a something from the mortal uprising mm, or true. something even afterwards you don't know okay cool yeah 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 David yeah. Being as Thorn is a character of shifted, fused mm. creatures, what would Thorn know of any experimentation to mess around with humans or other humanoids? The I don't know. I think Thorn's experience in in the Fey Wild is. If any any creatures did combine in certain ways, it was less experimental and more. Mm. Oh, here's a fun magical thing that's happened. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. They're one person now. <laughs> yeah, you know that kind of thing, rather than specifically that being forced. Yeah, in some way. Yeah, it happens in in magical circumstances sometimes. Uh, but but this is something this, very different. This is very different. Can I look in a newer book specifically for anything that mentions what these enhancements are, please? Mm, as you kind of, yeah, start then pulling further books out. Yeah, I'll be joining in with this, looking in books and stuff. Um, you start pulling out a lot more workbooks, almost. Sort of uh, compiled notes. And whilst these ones, everything you have been reading has been, has been written in common, these ones are written in... Well, what languages does everyone know? Abyssal, common, elvish, infernal. Mm-hmm. Common, elvish, gnomish, orc, and sylvan. <sighs> Ranger, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, com- ah. Common, elvish, and giant. Nice. Giant. <laughs> common, elvish, giant, orc. Common and celestial. They're all written in celestial. <gasps> oh. In a much older language. And... To be honest, Gail, you don't really understand what it's talking about a lot of it, but there are alchemical procedures, there are some arcane weapon blueprints, um, and a lot of biological diagrams all mixed in amongst these books. And this is clearly the more concise work that this person has been has been putting together. And it looks like they're they're making weapons, creatures. They're making an army. David, hmm. if if I'm looking over his shoulder, I don't read Celestial, so I don't know if you'll be able to answer. Is this the same handwriting as the newer books, or is this a different... I would say it's harder to tell because it's tell. Yeah, a different script, but yeah. it's the same ink. Mm. Does um, Gail share this information with us? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the three books that are on the table at the top, Deacon's gone up to Thorn and had... Oh, that- all of those have just got that one sentence in. Yeah. And in fact, as you've checked the sort of more recent books, all of them are filled with that same phrase. <laughs> Someone's slowly losing control and losing their faculties. There's a wonderful grinding back towards the entrance. Oh, no. As you can imagine, a door is being closed. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. We need to go now. 
r- run the door back. we came in. The door we came in from. Yeah, so from, from the garden, I'd say, yeah. So <gasps> the oh. door we came into the house, not the door yeah. into the library room. Mm-hmm. It's time to escape, I think. Is there another door out of this library other than the one we came in? There are two. I cast Thaumaturgy to see if the doors are unlocked, to see if I just whoosh, open Both of them, them slam open. Right, great. <laughs> Choose one, and let's make our move. Fireheart, you're the one they think is coming. We'll follow you. <laughs> Fine, come on. And just heads to the closest door. They're kind of sat next to each other in a corner. Would you like to choose the left path or the right? Which one did we come in? Just, just so we neither know. of those. Oh, neither of these. Side. These are different. The uh, the one Sorry. on the right has stairs descending, and the one on the left doesn't. We heard, we heard noises from downstairs. From downstairs we? below. Mm. Going down seems silly to me. Let's go to the left. It goes against all my instincts. I normally pick the right, but I want to go left. Gail getting very excited over there. As they go through the door, yeah. Gail's going to say, if I know scary stories, and I do, he cannot die. And as they go through the door, she shuts the door, mm-hmm. and I would like to cast invisibility. Mm. Um, and so I'm going to stay on this side of the door so that I can see who is coming. So you send everyone else through. Oh. I send everyone else through and I'm invisible. Shut the door and you stay on the other side. And I have the same movement. <laughs> Do we keep the lights if she's not with us? Are you going to turn the lights off? Can the lights go through with them and me not be there? Or They won't be that... able to follow much further because you'll lose sight of where they're going. Mm. Um, then no. <laughs> I'd rather be invisible and see who this person is that, or this thing is that's coming behind us. Are there sconces there. still in the room? They are. They are. They look very used and burnt out. There are sort of almost dragging footprints yeah I can't like you that. can hear like oh, I will no. like scraping of something being like pulled torch. across the ground oh man you light a torch yeah if Amazing. we're in the room yeah I've got, will... I've got a torch as well so I like you're gonna light a torch great I will yeah. light both our torches with druidcraft so <laughs> those of you doing. that have rushed through Gary have you gone with them as well uh, yeah I kind of feel like we were just like pushed through yeah. by Gail yeah, and yeah, then yeah. she's I did, I didn't push it. I oh, was okay. just literally yeah. as everyone else went through I was going to just shut the door behind the door. you mm. and stay on this side we just kind of realise in the darkness yeah. that Gail isn't there yeah. Yeah. and pull out yeah. the, the, the uh, I think here. I'm going to be listening to the door because uh, that feels like a pretty brave move to me I'm going to kind of be listening at the door mm-hmm. to see what's happening with Gail um, does it seem like there is 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 there a can you see underneath the door uh, yeah, there is so a small I'm gap. gonna um, take off my jacket, and if they're, as I see them starting to light torches, and I'm gonna put that to so that they nobody can see light coming through, so it doesn't draw attention oh, to where Gail is. Amazing! He's becoming a man of action. <laughs> 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 so yeah. you all find yourself in a fairly small room, um, actually, but it's clustered and and filled with loads of different inanimate objects. There are tables, uh, glass tanks. Um, there are books of a similar style actually and in one corner that has a little bit more space there is a desk that as you kind of like move into the room it's 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 like a step over so you can quick, catch a quick glance of it there's there's loads of arcane runes uh, in, engraved into the desk and in front of it two glass cages you can imagine um both of which have got a table on them a sort of a, a a flat table stood in the centre of it again with more arcane runes written on there is a right at the other end of the room sort of in one corner the, 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 the wall opens up into a, a further corridor but in this space that you're gathered in there are hiding places Sorry, did you say there was uh, doors on the on in this room as well? Yeah, so there my is, brain just went yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basically, there's the door you came in on. Uh, yeah. There is a space at the far end, that, yeah. a corridor leaving, and everything else is inanimate objects. But interestingly, there is a desk with some arcane yeah. runes on it yeah, in front yeah, of yeah. that. that. Two glass cages within which there are two tables, like there's a table in each. Did the runes mean anything on a quick glance? Make an arcana check. I'm listening. I'm keeping listening cl- to close the door to see what happens, but, and ready to kind of give signal mm. um, to be like either a signal to be like cut the lights or signal right. to you know something's coming. Yeah, just to, sixteen. You know. Sixteen. So yeah, actually, from a quick glance at the desk um, in front of the two cages, you can you think you could probably work it. It's some kind of um, 
replication device. You're seeing some conjuration, some transmutation, but like almost like a copying pattern. And so as you kind of have a quick glance over, uh, look into these two cages, and there's sort of a, a, an openable door on each of them. You get the impression that if you were to put something inside one, deal with the desk, it would be replicated in the second. Mm-hmm. I explain that in a whisper. <laughs> right. To anyone nearby. We're really healing things we want to put in there and test. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Could that be of any use to us? Deacon whispers. To replicate something. Supplies, maybe? Mm. I don't know if there's anything we're in such short supply that... I don't know, a second morning star always makes me happy, but... Mm. Uh, why not? Give it a go. Maybe I should try it with something I'm not so attached to first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I chuck a crossbow bolt in there. Just, I don't use these very often. It's not organic. Nothing's going to turn into some kind of monster if you try to replicate that, surely. Okay. Famous last word. I'll try the runes. Amazing. Once uh, Eloise has put a crossbow bolt in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you do. The, as you sort of start activating them, there is a soft glow from both, from both the, from the desk as well as both cages. And you activate the correct runes. You watch as one cage glows, soft blue, with the uh, with the table and the crossbow bolt in. And in the second space, in the second cage, another table and a crossbow bolt materialize. So that one now has two tables and a crossbow bolt. Oh. Was the table in the other glass thing? Yep. Oh, so we put the crossbow bolt on a table. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's it replicated and the, it replicated table, the table, table and the crossbow bolt. Whoa. Why has this person left the tables in here? That seems... <laughs> Outside. Gail, you hear the buzz of arcane energy happening beyond the wall. And the library door slams open. There are a few... You're sort of in the way you're kind of lingering back on the opposite side. You don't quite catch a glimpse of what's moving into the room. But there is a thud as you can imagine a body is dropped in the doorway and then just very slowly the shepherd starts moving through the bookshelves Ah, ah. and it passes around the edge walks very carefully in front of you its smiling face locked in that horrible grin and it walks to the door that the others passed through. Are you stood directly in front of the door? I'm stood like if the door opened, like so that like next to the door. So if the door opened, I could sort of slip through. That mm. was sort of the plan. Mm-hmm. But if if I may, as soon as I see the shepherd, I'm going to message. It's the shepherd to Thorn. If there's time to do that, there is time. Um, you get that message. I don't know whether or not you want to reply or action anything. I will say to you in your head hide and then I will whisper to everyone in the room the shepherd approaches hide hide very stealthily try to torches off hide torches Torches out amazing everyone uh, in the room then make a stealth check and Deacon's going to pull out a a rope from his back to cover himself over a bit more Mm -hmm. do I need to make a stealth check or uh... no I mean you're invisible oh no (laughs) very stealth (laughs) 25. Nice. 12. Nice. Oh, I make it a disadvantage as well, Jamel. You oh, make it yeah. a disadvantage as well. Because I'm exhausted. Because you're exhausted. <sighs> I mean, it was already like a natural two, so it oh, can't be any worse. Eight. So it was a three. Eight. And oh, a nine. No. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, I feel like getting the rope out may have hindered him. <laughs> so I can imagine Thorn. Where, where is Thorn hidden? Uh, there is like bookcases and stuff. There's a whole load of different. Actually, you know what? Like Thorn room. is just gonna climb on top of a bookcase, just mm. like clamber effortlessly up, like mm. their sort of feline paws, just without a sound, just wow, whisk up. And I love that. They're image. on top of a bookcase, Amazing. and they know just the right shadows, just the right dappled lighting yeah. that just works with the fur and the cloak, and just. And everybody God. else just sort of tucks themselves in behind other inanimate objects in yeah. the room, hoping for the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Everyone else is playing hide and seek. Yeah. yeah. Loose, loosen this sword out of the scabbard, little, like nervously, like it's yeah, rattling. Yeah. yeah. Um, Gail, 
as the the shepherd stands directly in front of the door it places one hand on either side of the uh, the frame and just smashes its face into the door <gasps> over and over and over again what can everybody make a a frightened check please oh no, no. no. Remind me how we do uh, it. Yeah, yeah remind, remind me. me the rules. So wisdom oh, yeah. saving sure. throw. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, no. Oh, no. And a wisdom saving throw. I, I'm at disadvantage, aren't I? Mm-hmm. No, not for saving throws. Not for saving not throws. Not for saving throws. Saving okay. Throws. Just ability checks, isn't it? I mean... <laughs> yeah, you will be now. <laughs> um, yeah. No, oh, man. <laughs> oh, okay. no. What does that one mean, Daryl? Is that good or bad? That's a natural 20. Oh! Yay! <laughs> Amazing. Phew. Oh, okay. Um, wisdom saving. Mm-hmm. Wisdom saving. That's a non-natural twenty. Oh. Beautiful. So yeah, anyone fifteen and above? Fifteen. You succeeded. Oh. Anybody fourteen and below? That's a point of exhaustion as the fear creeps in even oh. further. So is that Who one failed? for Deacon? One for Deacon. Oh no. It's Deacon on three. Deacon's on three. Deacon's on three. Yeah. What's three mean? Three, three is I'm when it starts getting it. bad. It's Disadvantage oh. on attack rolls and saving throws. <gasps> Deacon. I know, I know, I know. Deacon. No, Disadvantage no. on attack rolls and saving throws. We're not going to rest at any point. Oh, of course <laughs> not. <laughs> when did you ever think we were going to do that? Yeah. <laughs> so, after this wonderful display in front of you, Gail, just very calmly stops, uses the handle and opens the door. It doesn't enter. It just stands there waiting. What are you all doing? Like, sounds they're waiting like the shepherd knows that there's people in the room or waiting just generally, like... It's incredibly hard to tell. Oh! <laughs> I'm not going to move. Uh, it's going to see me. I failed pretty badly. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of you did. Oh, no. Um, you can't go in that room. Is the other door that they've just come in from open? The shepherd, yeah. Yeah. I think... To begin with, yeah, she's going to run, slam that door in the hope that it will sort of distract them for a second. Mm. And Um, then run back to the door. So as you move around to the entrance of the library, um, Rosie's body is blocking the door. Oh! She's clearly been dragged foot first. Bones are broken. The arms are at odd angles. Her face is missing. But Rosie's body is very much in the doorway. I think then she just sort of pulls books out of the bookcase. Mm -hmm. I think she's playing for time and panicking. Mm. And yeah, just sort of like pulls a few books out and Mm -hmm. then sort of runs. I think she also wants to be back with the team. Yeah. So yeah, it's like pull, 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 pull. And then just sort of runs back to the doorway and would like to slip through mm. into the darkness. So at least she's with the others. Absolutely. What I would say is make a stealth check. Fair. As you're trying to move around to create a distraction. And that's a disadvantage, that's isn't it? Disadvantage. Uh that's thirteen. Hmm. I rolled a fourteen. Oh! I'm so sorry. Oh. So you run. Can I can I give myself bardic inspiration or is that cheating? Uh a bit, a bit too late at this point, Fair unfortunately. Enough. But what I would say is you run, see Rosie's body, think can't close the door okay different plan pull 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 books as you run back round the shepherd is gone <gasps> and then you just feel a hand on your <gasps> shoulder <gasps> just slowly grip into through your clothes into your flesh <gasps> and just turn and start dragging you down the stairs Baby of the other David. doorway she's invisible no no hmm? that's not my question have I seen the shepherd turning to go oh yeah yeah, I'll say actually, yeah. I will cast Hunter's Mark on the Shepherd. Very nice. Um, and it, dra- it turns and it drags you and it goes through the other door and starts pulling you step by step downward. Do I have time to do anything or am I. That's where we're going to end the episode. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> You 
You have been listening to the gruesome adventures of Deacon Fireheart Buttons with David Knight as your dungeon master, Sarah Gain as Deacon, Ben Galpin as Thorn, Daryl Bailey as Eloise, Grace Kelly Miller as Gary, and Vicky Gaskin as Gail. Original music by David Knight. Editing by Pippa Beckford. Please tell your friends, subscribe, and follow us on all the social media. Thank you for listening to No Small Roles. Do you like scary stories?